Or yes. All right, we're recording. Yay! Hi, everyone. Welcome tonight. Um, I am not Melissa. <laughs> In case you don't know me, my name is Natalie Johnson and I am one of the senior rubies on this team. And I have the pleasure of going through chapter six with you guys tonight. Um, I don't know about you all, but this, I felt like there were so many light bulb moments going through this chapter, not only in business, but in my personal life, just this reflection of like, oh my gosh, why didn't I know all of this earlier? Um, and a little bit of connection for me personally, I'm, um, my husband and I are going through the book Sacred Marriage. I don't know if anyone has gone through this um, book, but in Sacred Marriage, he talks a lot about how part of the point of relationships is to grow us and that it shouldn't be easy and that there, um, that we really should be looking for opportunities for growth in our relationships. And I felt like that was such a beautiful parallel to everything um, that this chapter has to offer. So we're going to quickly go through um, the chapter, some highlights, and I'd love to open it for a few opportunities for people to share as we go through here. So um, please feel free to jump in and share um, if you have things that you want to add. But I also want to just thank you all for devoting some time to this. Uh, I know it's hard on a Sunday evening. I know for me, we do family dinner on Sunday evenings, and this is a hard time, but um, I'm really glad you're all here and taking time to pour into yourself and your life. I and mean, we all realize that this is much more than a business book. <laughs> it is a life book. So I'm so glad you're taking time tonight to do this. Um, okay. So just kind of taking it from the beginning, relationships. Um, it's very easy in this chapter to, of course, think back to our own personal relationships, maybe the marriage that we're in, maybe past uh, boyfriend relationships. Um, and it, although that is fabulous to do, I want us to also really try to think about the relationships that we have in our business. So that might be relationships with our potentials, relationships with our downline, even relationships with our upline. So the relationships that revolve, of course, around our business, our plexus, why we're all here together tonight. So one of the things that um, she talks about in this book about, or this chapter about relationships is realizing that in a relate, like we are surrounded by relationships and there will be negative experiences, relationships. We will have breakups. We will have those no's. And so every time she's talking about a relationship with a breakup, I, in my head, am thinking of that person who said no to me, <laughs> that relationship, that person I reached out to, maybe that person who started Plexus and then has dropped off and has stopped. And I know we all have those people. So I was kind of trying to put those people in. And so she says, when you've got a fixed mindset around these types of experiences, you're going to let those no's or let those quote failed relationships really define who you are and prevent you from wanting to move on and form satisfying relationships in the future. So I want you to take a minute to think, have there been situations in my plexus business where I've got maybe a no or something that happened in a relationship that has taken me and derailed me and taken me down a path of not wanting to pursue that again. Um, just by show of hands, has anyone had that experience where you've had a no and it's totally stopped you from wanting to reach out? Yes, right? It derails us. It takes us into this place of like, ha, that was uncomfortable and awful and I don't really want to do that again. And um, I didn't realize that was a fixed mindset, of course, until reading this book. I'm like, oh, that's me. I've done that for sure. I've had those rejection moments and then said, huh, peace out. I don't want to do this. And that was a fixed mindset. Now the person in a growth mindset, of course, is completely different, right? A person in a growth mindset says, hmm, this is interesting. This isn't personal. This isn't completely about me. What can I learn from this experience? Um, how can I forgive this person? and move on with my life because I got a lot of life to do and I can't sit and spend too much time dwelling on this situation. Unlike, of course, the fixed mindset person who feels judged, feels like they're labeled, feels labeled by that rejection from this person and feels like they might even be branded as unlovable. And I know that we're talking about relationships here, but in our plexus world, I feel like I have branded myself as like that person. You know, if someone gives me a no and I'm like, oh, great no one's going to say yes to me ever again. That's, it's a no forever. Apparently I'm just the kind of person who gets a no. And it's so sad. So often in this fixed mindset, she goes on to say that our response to that when we are in a fixed mindset is to lash out or to want to wound others. And I will admit 
I have been there. Someone says no to me. I'm mad about it. I want them to, <laughs> to feel as bad as I feel. And I don't think it's, it's super obvious, but sometimes here's an example. Has anyone had this situation happen? You have a dream teamer in mind. You've reached out to them. They've told you no. And then a month later, they sign up with another MLM. Anyone have this happen? Yeah. And my instinct when that's happened to me twice was like, I'm not buying anything from you. <laughs> and that, that's the fixed mindset. This like, I'm kind of mad about this. And I kind of would like a little revenge and I'm not happy. And so I'm going to not buy anything from your new MLM that you decided to do because I wanted you on my team. And it's so interesting because the growth mindset, the growth mindset says, well, you know what? Every interaction can teach me something. Every relationship I can grow from. What can I learn and be and do different and do better? And actually, my goal in a growth mindset is to forgive you and to pour love into you and to still contribute to you as a human being. And the big, big goal being forgiveness. Now, that is hard to do. Forgiveness is hard to do. Um, and I personally believe, and I know that we have a lot of believers on this team, but I believe that it's almost impossible to have the amount of forgiveness you need to have on your own. I actually would venture to say it's, it is impossible that without the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ who has forgiven us, it is impossible to forgive and move forward and love on people as much as we should. But what she suggests is a growth mindset is one of forgiveness. And that if we're going to truly grow in our relationships with people, we have to be able to forgive. And I would take it the next step and say that forgiveness doesn't come from your own strength. You may need to find it from somewhere else. And that place for me is Jesus and knowing that I'm forgiven on a daily basis. So it's only right for me to pour that forgiveness into others. So she goes on now to say, um, on page, let's see here, page 149, she has this quote that she says, I'll be damned if I'm going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. And I thought that was just, she said, this phrase should be the mantra of a growth mindset. And I think that sometimes we do that in this business, right? We have that no, and we sit here and we feel sorry for ourselves. And instead of doing something about it or seeing what we could do to change, we get stifled. And I, I once again, um, will share, I had a very, very, very aggressive um, situation months ago and it stalled me for a long time. I still feel like I'm trying to get through the trudge and like get out of that stalled place. But this is not the mindset I had of this like, ah, I'll be damned if I'm going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. But wow, what a great thing to think of. I just can't sit. I don't have time to sit here and feel sorry for myself. Let's get that growth mindset going. So she goes on then to talk about what's really interesting when it comes to relationships and the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset is in the fixed mindset, we've been talking so far about ourselves and our own mindset. But in a relationship, your fixed mindset says, I'm fixed. Can't do anything to change myself. You're fixed. Therefore, our relationship it's stagnant, it's fixed. It's either gonna succeed or it's not. It's either perfect or wonderful or it's not. And there is not room for growth. Now the growth mindset not only says, I believe that I can grow and change. It says, I believe you can grow and change. And I believe our relationship can grow and change. And what a great place to be. Like that really should be, <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful mindset of like, not only am I gonna grow and be a better human, but so are you. And therefore our relationship will grow. So um, on page 153, she talks about the importance of communication and not mind reading. And I just loved, loved this little moment she shared. I'm going to read it to you. On the bottom of the page of 153, she says, she was sitting there with her husband and there we were sitting together. And he said to me, quote, I need more space. Everything went blank. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was completely mistaken, but was I completely mistaken about our relationship? Finally, I summoned the courage to ask, what do you mean? And he says, I need you to move over so I can have more room. <laughs> I'm like, How often does this happen to us where we hear something um, because we're in a fixed mindset, we don't think to ask for clarification because the way I heard it must be the way that it is. 
because there's not going to be room for interpretation or room for growth or room for maybe misunderstanding something. And if I'm in a fixed mindset, it is what it is. So she summons the courage to say, I'm sorry, exactly what did you mean? He's like, I just need a little more space. <laughs> oh my gosh. How often has this happened in our business where maybe we've heard from, let's say our, our level one who we thought was going to run with us, who says to us, yeah, no, I just, I, I can't post on social media. And instead of asking, I'm sorry, what exactly do you mean? We just go, oh, okay. I guess she's out, never gonna do it, doesn't wanna do it, doesn't want the business at all. I'm gonna write her off, cross her off my list. Like there are moments where we need to ask for clarification. What is it exactly did you mean by that? Maybe they're just simply confused about, I literally don't know how to work Instagram, could you help me? It's not that I don't wanna post, I just don't know how to do it. Or I would really love to post prettier pictures, but I don't know how to work an editing program, could you help me? And so I think we often in that fixed mindset, we don't leave room for all of the other things that could potentially happen. Or in the fixed mindset, we don't leave room for the fact that maybe this person wants to grow. And maybe if I just ask the right question and we have more conversation, I can actually help them as opposed to just assuming what they said was what they said and moving on. So um, she goes on then to say in pay, on page 158, this is another moment that I just really love. She's talking about, she goes through lots of relationships, right? And talks about the dynamics and the fixed mindset. But when this gentleman in the relationship at the bottom of the page here, I think his name was Ted, he decides that for himself, he's going to have a growth mindset around the relationship with his wife. And instead of getting really angry when he comes home and the house is a mess, he asks himself, what's the mature thing to do? And I know it seems simple, but that question, I don't ask myself that question enough. What's the mature thing to do? I often react based on my emotion and based on the sense of entitlement and based on the sense of a fixed mindset, which I'm now learning, as opposed to saying, what would the mature thing do, like what could I do here that would be really mature when I come home and the house is a disaster which happens sometimes I don't know how many of you are in this boat but my husband works full-time during the week and I get little bits of time to work my plexus business often it's on the weekend and I feel like I work so hard to keep my house up all week long and then I leave on Saturday for like four hours and I come back <laughs> and it's like what happened in the four hours that I was gone and often I'm a little upset and I'm frustrated. I'm like, come pull it together, right? But is that really the mature thing to do? No, the mature thing to do would be to just step in and clean up and help and do, do the mature thing. And so that for me, Sat was like, yeah, I need to be asking myself that question often. What's the mature thing to do in this situation? And he goes on to answer his own question by starting to clean up the house. And then he offered Karen support rather than judgment. What would happen if we offered support instead of judgment. Every time we wanted to say something judgmental, we switched it and we said something supportive. Every time we wanted to roll our eyes or do something judgmental, we did something supportive. How much would that change our relationships? How much would that grow our relationships with our downline? If every time a situation presented itself where we were a little frustrated with our team, if we took that and said, wait, 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 what would the mature thing be to do here? How could it be supportive instead of judgmental? We could really, really enhance our relationship. So I loved that. Um, she goes on then to talk about the fact that a relationship, like developing and growing in a relationship has to happen in an atmosphere of trust. And I think that we talk about that a lot in Plexus, building relationships and trust being the foundation of our ability to help people. Not only help people with the business side, but help people with their health. People are not going to talk to us about how many bowel movements they're having a day if they don't trust us, if we don't have a relationship that's built on trust. And so I love that she throws in there that like, in order for growth to happen, it has to happen in a space of trust. And if you aren't working in a space of trust, that's where you need to start before we can really grow. Then on page 163, let me see here, 163, I have a note for myself. Oh, okay. Love this. Love this. This is where we're talking about trust. And on page 163, kind of in the middle of the page, she says this, 
in the context of this relationship, each partner is helping the other to do the things that they want to do and to become the person they want to be. So she's talking about in a trusting relationship, both people are focused on helping the other person to do the things they want to do and become the person they want to be. And what I want you guys to understand is that sentence is what Plexus is for you. If you will allow it, Plexus is a space where you have a whole group of people who want to help you do what you want to do and become who you want to be. You do not have to do this alone. You can do this even with a spouse that's not on board all the way. You can do this even with a family. I have a family who doesn't get it, doesn't understand, doesn't even want me doing this. But the reality is we can grow because of the relationship that we have with each other. Because our goal in this relationship in Plexus is to do this, is to help each other to do the things that we want to do and become the person we want to be. So here there's a quote that says, to me, the whole point of marriage is to encourage your partner's development and have them encourage yours. And I want you to think about that from us. The whole point of Plexus is to encourage your development and for you to encourage the rest of us. We are in this together. We've heard this said a million times, like Plexus is it's personal development with the comp plan attached to it, right? Like we are here to grow as people and we are not here to do it alone. And actually I would venture to say that growth can't happen outside of relationship. It is only within a relationship, in a trusting relationship where we actually can grow. So I love that. And I truly believe like that's literally what we are doing here is creating these relationships for each other. So then it goes on the bottom here, it says friendships. Friendships can give each other wisdom and courage to make growth enhancing decisions. And friends can reassure each other of their fine qualities. That is another thing we should be doing in this space of Plexus. If you are not taking time to encourage your downline, to encourage your upline, to encourage your sidelines and remind them of their amazing qualities and support them, we're missing the boat. We're missing an incredible opportunity. She goes on here to say that we want friends that we can call and say, tell me I'm not making a bad you know, choice when I'm breaking up with my boyfriend or tell me I'm not stupid for you know, whatever, whatever. And I, in there, I, I wrote in, we need to be able to call each other and say things like, tell me I'm not dumb for reaching out to that dream teamer of mine, even though I think that they're going to say no, right? Tell me I'm not stupid for making that post on Facebook because we need each other to say, no, no, you're not. You're going to reach someone with that post. That was going to, that's great. I'm so proud of you. Wonderful courage. And like, you're doing a good job. You're growing, you're changing. I'm here for you. And that. That is literally what we are doing here. That is our whole goal. This is why we're all going to try to be in Arizona together is to do this as a team and encourage each other in friendship, in support, with the goal being that we're all going to become better people and not I'm going to become a better person while I step on your toes, which is what that fixed mindset would say, right? I'm going to grow. You all can't grow. If you grow, actually, that's threatening to my growth. But if we can all be in a growth mindset, we're going to realize we can all grow together. And I love that. Um, the other thing here that I love, she goes on like the next little paragraph to talk about when we have that person we can turn to, they can offer questions. And she's giving an example of a test like, well, what happened on that exam? Do you know the material? Did you study enough? Do you need a tutor? Like, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. And that is what your upline is for. They are someone that you should be able to call and they can say to you, okay, well, let's talk about that. Like, show me the message that you sent. What, how did they respond? Do you need some more help and some more coaching? I can get you some more information if you need it. Like, that is what the growth mindset seeks and wants someone that I can talk to when things don't go well, someone that I can bounce ideas off of, someone that will give me honest feedback and I can take that feedback and not have it hurt my ego and not have it derail me completely and not feel like I'm a failure and I'm never ever going to do anything in this business because I made that one message and it flopped. But, oh, let me call that upline of mine and let her help guide me. Or let me call that sideline or someone who's on this call. Um, okay, so then she moves on to talk about, I want to, uh, once again, there's tons of good info in here, and I'm just trying to pick the little things that I felt like were great, but she talks about shyness. And what I found fascinating about her conversation around shyness is, and I don't know if you guys have had this experience, but I've had level ones of mine who said, oh, I'd love to do the business, but I'm just too shy. 
I don't really want to talk to people. I'm not that I'm not like you, Natalie. I'm not extroverted. I don't like to hang out with people all the time. I don't want to go make new friends. I'm just too shy. And I've taken that as like a really good excuse. Like, oh, okay, that's fine. I guess, yeah, you're too shy for this. And not really understood that, that that's not a thing that I should be worried about. And according to our amazing book here, shyness is not necessarily the problem. It's mindset once again. So she says here that for people that were shy, the shy, growth-minded people looked at social situations as challenges. And even though they felt anxious, they actively welcomed the chance to meet someone new. So I challenge you to think through the people that you've reached out to and the ones that you maybe thought were too shy to do this. And instead of asking, are they too shy, ask yourself, what's their mindset around that? Are they a shy person with a growth mindset? Because those people probably do really well. And actually we hear this all the time, right? There's those diamonds that we hear share and they're like, well, I had a hundred friends on Facebook and I'm introverted and don't really like to have people over to my house, but here I am diamond. That's a growth mindset person. That is not a shy person with a fixed mindset. That's a shy person with a growth mindset who says, yeah, this is scary and uncomfortable, but I'm going to do it anyways. So I loved that. Um, then she moves on page 170 to talk about bullying. She talks about bullying a lot from a school perspective, but I want to talk to you about it from a business perspective. I don't know if any of you have experienced, I feel like I've experienced once what I would consider bullying in my business. Um, I got a very, and this is just a few months ago, I got a very aggressive message from someone who I consider to be one of my best friends. Um, basically telling me that I am a horrible person and that I am manipulating people and that I am taking advantage of the friendships that I have and all of this like awful, awful stuff. It felt like I was being bullied. And in a fixed mindset, the person who feels like they're being bullied takes it personally. They start to believe that they're nobody, that nobody likes them, that they're stupid, that they're weird, that they're a misfit. And their goal, once again, gets back to that sense of revenge. Like, I just want that person who's bullying me to feel as awful as I feel right now. And I will tell you, that was me months ago. I felt awful. I started to believe it. I started to think like, and I had to call, I called, I immediately called my upline. I was like, am I a horrible person? Like, I am, are these things real about me? I started to believe that, that, that they were real. And she's like, Natalie, like, you love people, right? Yes, I love people. Well, you're not reaching out to someone because you don't care about them or you're trying to manipulate them. And like she had literally had to talk me off the edge. And I realized now I'm just in the, like the thick of a fixed mindset. There was nothing about that, that message that I got from this person who I thought was one of my closest friends where I said, which would have been a growth mindset. Oh, let's see. This is not a reflection on me, but let's see if there's anything I can learn from this. And there might be something going on with her. Now this bullied situation, the people with the growth mindset that were being bullied didn't put themselves in this like, oh, this is all about me. They said, wow, hmm, this is not a reflection of who I am. I wonder if something's going on with this other kid. I wonder if there's something going on with their home life. It seems like they're really upset. And their goal, these children's goal with the growth mindset was to educate. Well, I just want to have a talk with the person who's bullying me. I want to tell them that it's not funny when they do that. And I want to tell them that it's kind of mean and it hurts my feelings. And I want to educate them. And, and their event, like their big, big, big goal was to forgive, which is we've already talked about. This goal of like growth mindset is all about forgiveness. And that was so like when I think about the bullying, I feel like I've experienced, I that's, that's so hard to sit and be like, okay, okay. I got this awful message. I felt really bullied. Can I look at this from the perspective of this really isn't about me. And the reality is, and thank God we have amazing women on this team who helped me to see this because I will tell you, my upline said this, well, Natalie, isn't she part of a network marketing company? Yeah. Isn't she failing in her network marketing company? Yeah. Hasn't she had a really, really, really hard time doing her business? Yeah. And didn't you want her part of your business? Yeah. And hasn't she seen you be successful in your business? Yeah. And it all was like, oh my gosh, this isn't about me. This, this isn't about me. Oh, 
okay, but I couldn't do it for myself, which once again is why we need to surround ourselves with everyone <laughs> who can help us to see these things because I was in a fixed mindset while my upline was in the growth mindset of like, hold on, let's take a look. Let's really step back and see what's really going on with this whole thing. Um, has, is there anyone else on this call who's experienced something that you would put like in the category of kind of feeling bullied in your business that you're like, are you willing to share? Is anyone willing to share an experience that they had and, and whether you were in that fixed mindset or growth mindset? Kristen, you want to share with us? Let me see if I can unmute you. Um, a couple of years ago, I had a, um, I did a birthday special, right? And I said, I put a video out. I was being really bold. And I had a friend of mine who has been following my posts for a while call me and say, okay, I want I want the triplex in X Factor Plus. And that was one thing I was giving away was a bottle of X Factor Plus because it made such a big deal for me. And I was so excited. And um, when she called me and said, I want this, I was like, okay, sure, fine. That's great. So I signed her up as a, cust as a preferred customer. She didn't want to be an ambassador, which was fine. And I signed her up. I sent her her free pick. And then a few days later, I got a message from another woman who works with her at the job call started sending me these ugly text messages because she this woman I don't want to call names so the girl who called me I'm going to call her Mary <laughs> and then the other lady who works at the same office I'm going to call her um Jennifer and Jennifer signed, forced her daughter to sign up under me at one point and she's like, oh, she's going to be this great ambassador. She's going to do all these things. But she was never responsive. She never answered any of my questions or whatever. So I did this birthday special. This girl, um, Sarah, I forgot her name already, called me and said, okay, I want this. So I signed her up as a preferred customer. And it wasn't a couple of days later, I started getting these messages like, did you sign her up under my daughter? And why didn't you do that? And how dare you play these games with me? And I'm like, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Like, I have no idea. And she's like, I'm going to ruin your business. I'm going to tell my daughter, I'm going to take my daughter off your team. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And it just, it was awful. I was so embarrassed. And I was like, I didn't steal anybody because I didn't know they were working together. And I would have never said, Oh, have you been talking to anyone else? Did they contact you? How did you, you know, like I did a birthday special and she called me. Right. And I'm like, why would I sign her up under somebody else? Because Right. <laughs> <She> called, <laughs> yeah. Cause she called me and I was like, okay. So I did, I got so down on myself. I'm like, she's going to ruin my business. I called my upline and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. How do I, do, how do I handle this? But I did, I shut down. Cause I was like, she's going to ruin my business. She's totally going to ruin my business. Well, the whole thing was, so I stepped up to the plate and I was like, okay, fine. Um, I called my customer and I said, look, I didn't know that you had been talking to them. And I asked her a little bit more specific. I said, what happened? Did you, and the thing was, is that she, the lady at the, her, her same office, whose daughter was an ambassador, the mom, the mother had been talking to her about it and had given her some samples, but she didn't tell me that. And not only did she not tell me that, but she never followed up with my customer to say, Hey, my daughter's the ambassador. If you want to buy these, you need to call her or have, have the daughter call her and say, Hey, I'm an ambassador. Well, do you like these products? Do you want to buy them or try them or whatever? Never did any of that. I've never, no follow up. It was months after. And so I had no idea. Anyway, it was a big disaster. So I stepped up to the plate and I'm like, look, if you want her to be your customer, then you're going to, your daughter's going to have to call her and she's going to have to do the right thing and be an ambassador and call her like within two days, you know, like here's her phone number, here's her contact. You're going to have to call her and do the right thing. And I told my customer, I was like, look, I didn't, I wasn't stealing you, but if you want to be her customer, I'm okay with that. But I have, um, I don't know what to do. And I even told her, I was like, look, if you want to switch ambassadors, you can fill out this paperwork and you're going to have to mail it in. But if she doesn't call you in the next day or two, then you need to, you can, it's up to you, but you can stick with me and I'll continue to coach you. Cause I was all into telling her how to take the products and when, and like I had been following her for two weeks and then all this stuff came up. So I did, I nearly shut down and it was months I stopped sharing. I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, cause I didn't, happened. cause I didn't want to ruin my business. Right. And it's, it's, ah, it's so, yeah. Thank you for sharing. It's crazy how something that, that, 
really it's so, it's so simple and like like simply miscommunication really it was a lack of communication on their part and it was you know like this you feel like you're doing the right thing but it does place that seed of doubt in you when you have that fixed mindset of like oh my gosh what what happened what's yeah. going on what are you gonna do well she oh, ended up she ended up being my customer for god year year and a half wow. <laughs> before she upgraded to ambassador but i I did, I did the right thing. I stepped yeah, up absolutely. to the plate well, and yeah. I did the right thing. Yeah. It's just trying But to... it wasn't easy. No, of course. Of course not. Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. Um, thank you, Brandy. I see you're in the comments here um, that you just shared. Thank you so much for sharing too. I'm so sorry that you've been bullied as well. It is, it is hard. And I, I do think we've talked about this in the past, but I do think this the people who bully and the people who are, um, obviously they have a fixed mindset as well, but a lot of times it's like this intimidation where they don't really understand what we're doing. And on some level, they don't think that they could do it and it kind of pisses them off and they end up lashing out a little bit at us. So anyways, thank you guys so much for sharing your, your bullying stories. Um, so I wanted to share also here, uh, let's see. Um, So, I guess, well, let's see what time is it? Oh, we need to be done. Here are my few takeaways, and then we will be done. My the five takeaways I had from this. One, relationships are the place where we grow. And I would venture to say that it is only in, an, in a relationship that true growth can happen. So this, this is it. Relationships are where we will, we will find our biggest growth. Number two, it is the growth mindset that it is only within a growth mindset that we can look at every interaction as a potential opportunity to grow. Every interaction with a potential extra interaction with an ambassador, interaction with our upline as an opportunity for growth. Number three, people in a growth mindset understand the importance of communication and are willing to delve deeper and ask, why is that? Explain more. Number four, growth in relationship happens in an atmosphere of trust. And that has to be number one, build that atmosphere of trust. And number five, the goal for all of this is forgiveness. And growth is going to happen in the context of forgiveness. Uh, it can be hard, once again, to find that mindset and strength for forgiveness. But once again, I said before, I believe that that can be found just through the power of the Holy Spirit being able to move in us. And the fact that we have been forgiven over and over and over and over, moment by moment, uh, allows us the ability to forgive others. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us for this recap of chapter six. Next week, we're moving on, and I have not read any more. I am just uh, in the middle of this with all of you, so I'm eager to see what Chapter 7 has in store for us. So I'm going to stop the recording, and if anyone has any questions, you guys can stay on and chat. Thanks so much for joining us.